if you're looking for a new sunscreen, I have quite a few to tell you guys about today. Hey guys, welcome back to Sherry Proof. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new, welcome. And if you're already a part of the Sherry Proof family, thank you so much for clicking on today's video. So it's been a while since I've given you guys one of my sunscreen reviews. So this video is going to be completely about sunscreens. And I wanted to give you an update of some of the sunscreens that I've tried so far during the year. I have six sunscreens to talk about in this video. I actually had much more, but when I was trying to round up everything to start the video, I couldn't find some of them. <laughs> I have no idea where I put them. And generally, I tend to have sunscreens everywhere, in my office, in my bag, in my bedroom, in a drawer somewhere. So hopefully by the time I'm ready to do this video again, I can find those so I can let you know my thoughts on them. So before we get into the individual sunscreens, I want to mention a couple of commonalities among all of these sunscreens. Number one, they're all SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses which means all of these sunscreens will give you very high uva and uvb protection once you use them correctly the second thing is that all of these sunscreens will look good on skin of color i have no mineral sunscreens here all of these sunscreens are chemical uv filters and these are the ones that tend to be more invisible and blend in easier on brown skin tones so let's start first with the only sunstick that I have in today's video and that's the new one by Beauty of Jozon, their matte sunstick with mugwort and camellia. This is what it looks like and this was done in collaboration with Glow by Ramon. He is on Instagram, he is on YouTube, he is a cosmetic chemist and he has been a skincare influencer for a very long time. I actually really do enjoy the information that he shares especially in his sunscreen reviews and sunsticks are becoming a real thing now because it's easy for people to walk around with especially for reapplication and of course I was actually waiting to try this one before I gave you guys my ranking of my top sunstick recommendations for oily skin given that this one was marketed as a matte sunstick and I knew that they were talking to me and that I had to try it so I really do like the packaging very functional easy to remove cap there is a dial to turn up and also turn down to get the product back in as I mentioned, this sunscreen has all chemical filters, but Beauty of Joseon also mentions that this contains a sebum control silica powder, and that's one of the reasons why this is actually marketed to those who want a more matte finish when it comes to sunsticks. Now, there are some sunsticks, especially ones that look kind of clear, they tend to leave a more glossy look on the skin, and you will notice that those with this type of opaque type of look in the stick tends to have silica, and those would be the ones that I generally reach for for my skin type. Now besides silica, this also has mugwort, which is one of my favorite anti-inflammatory ingredients. And it also contains green tea, another really good one that has antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties. The sunscreen is fragrance free, alcohol free and essential oil free. So if you've been looking at some of the other sunsticks that I've recommended, particularly the Tokobo Cotton Soft Sunstick, and you are somebody that is concerned about fragrance, but you have oily skin or maybe oily sensitized skin when it comes to fragrance, then this one will definitely be the option. There is no fragrance and this smells like nothing. The application of this is so easy. I don't really get any tugging on the skin. Ramon actually says when you get your new stick to actually warm it up on the top of your hands and then apply and that will prevent any tugging against the skin. I never experienced any tugging at all and I've used this stick multiple times. Now the AAD recommends that for you to get the SPF protection that you should be applying about four passes on each section of the skin. I have used this sun stick both indoors and outdoors. I haven't gotten burnt when I use this sun stick. I don't get any ice sting. It really applies nicely on my oily skin. It also wears really good as an SPF under makeup. And as I mentioned makeup, let me just refer you to the demo that I did on Instagram and on TikTok where I showed the application of this sunstick as well as Dito Kobo over makeup. I don't know who are these people that are telling you that you can apply a sunstick over a full face of makeup and it will not disrupt your makeup. I have not had that experience. I don't know if maybe it's just probably just people using a light BB cream or just powder. But when I'm talking about reapplying SPF over makeup, I'm talking about I have on foundation, I have on concealer, blush, highlight. I have on a full face of makeup and I have not found a single sunstick that has not disrupted or smeared my makeup. Like it literally doesn't work in my mind to understand how this actual pull-in action is not going to smear makeup. That doesn't make any sense to me. Do I reapply sunscreen over makeup? I absolutely do. The method that I've been using 
using for quite a while is still the method that I use. I also have a demo of that in the highlights on my Instagram page. I highly recommend you check it out if you are trying to learn how to reapply sunscreen properly over a full face of makeup without messing it up. But I digress. I absolutely do recommend this if you are combination oily, you're looking for a sunstick that is fragrance free, that's going to give you that natural matte finish on the skin. It absolutely does that. That's going to be easy to put in your purse for reapplication on the go. This one ticks a lot of those boxes and very soon I'll let you know how this ranks in terms of my top sunsticks for oily skin but I'm going to tell you that it is definitely a contender. Next is going to be without a doubt my favorite lotion cream type sunscreen that I have tried in 2023 so far. Now there have been some amazing sunscreens released and I will be talking about some of those in this video but I have been gatekeeping on this one a little bit and the thing about it is I have been using it so much this tube is almost done and that says a lot because of the amount of sunscreens that I test on a regular, the amount of sunscreens that are in my rotation. I'm hardly ever using one sunscreen every single day for a week back to back and I have done that with this one. This is the Mixoon Centella Sun Cream SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. Again, all chemical filters. And if you looked at my recent video where I talked about some Korean products that didn't work for me, and there were two sunscreens that I talked about and I was trying to figure out what about those sunscreens might have been causing the irritation that I experienced. And one of the common factors that I noticed in both of those sunscreens was one of the UV filters called polysilicone 15. But then after that video, I started looking back at some of the sunscreens that I do love to check to see if I have an issue with this ingredient in other sunscreens. And I realized it couldn't be that that was causing the issue with those sunscreens because that's in the sunscreen. And it is actually found in other sunscreens that my skin does really, really well with. Now, why do I love this sunscreen? Number one, the application. This thing melts into the skin so quickly, so easily. But more than that, while it does leave a natural glow finish on my skin, kind of like the Abib in terms of the finish and how that looks on my skin, this one smooths the texture of my face. I just love how it looks on the skin. I feel like for lotion type sunscreens or sunscreens that leave a glow on the skin, sometimes, especially when you have oily skin or you have textured skin, it could kind of emphasize that, kind of like what a highlighter will do and kind of one of the reasons why we might prefer matte products, but this one actually does not do that on my skin and I really, really love how this looks on my skin. Now, this is a sunscreen that, as the name says, contains Centella Asiatica. So it does have those calming, soothing ingredients. And while I love this sunscreen a lot, let me put this out there right now. If you do not like essential oils, particularly lavender, then this one is not going to be for you. That lavender in there smells so calming to me. I absolutely love it. It gives not only a refreshing experience in terms of the smell, but there is also a cooling sensation one of the other reasons why i love the sunscreen when i apply this it feels so cool so nice and this one also contains alcohol which also lends to that beautiful texture and application on the skin however this sunscreen is also packed with a lot of lovely hydrating ingredients so it's nicely balanced and usually when you find me talk about sunscreens that have alcohol that i use on my skin it's because the formulation has been really balanced with other hydrating ingredients to combat any dehydration that that alcohol may cause on my skin but honestly if if you're combination oily, you're probably acne prone, but you have no issues with lavender. And by the way, it's not overpowering. It just smells so nice and refreshing. If you have no issues with those two things that I mentioned, I highly, highly recommend trying this sunscreen. Absolutely love, love, love this. Next are the two new sunscreens by Jumiso and let me just say congratulations again to Jumiso and for those of you who don't know Jumiso had released some sunscreens I don't know was it last year or late the previous year and they got some real terrible feedback from one of their sunscreens the white cast on it was horrible the application how it pulled on the skin and all of that and they literally went back to the drawing board and they reformulated and released these two new sunscreens that they call both their awesome <laughs> airy fit sunscreens screens. I think that's such an appropriate name for this launch. So there are two types. There is the one that's called the Awesome Airy Fit. That's the one with the yellow on the tube. And they also have the Awesome Airy Fit Daily Moisturizer with sunscreen. And that's the one with the blue on the tube. So let's talk about the commonalities. Again, SPF 50 plus, PA4 pluses for both of them. Both of these are fragrance free. And I know a lot of people 
prefer fragrance free sunscreens so automatically this is a great option for you they are also sensitive skin friendly unless you're actually allergic or have an issue with one of the uv filters or one of the other ingredients that's actually listed in here both of these i actually find to be lightweight on the skin and let me just say that when you hear me describe a sunscreen that's lightweight it may have a glow finish on the skin but it feels light or sometimes i can't even feel it on the skin versus something that's heavy or something that's greasy i want you to not confuse glow with grease and when i say lightweight i'm really talking about the feel on the skin whenever you see me demo sunscreens it's applied on a full face of all my other skincare so i would have done my toner my essence my serums my eye cream whatever i would have used before and my sunscreen will go on last another similarity between both of these is with regards to the ingredients so they both use bamboo extract which is very very soothing on the skin and helps to reduce any potential sensitivity but both of them also contains niacinamide sodium hyaluronate adenosine which is a well aging ingredient and vitamin e now let's talk a little bit about where they differ so while both of these are chemical sunscreens the combination of the uv filters used in both are a little bit different and interestingly while this one says airy fit sunscreen and this one says airy fit moisturizer with sunscreen i honestly expected that i would automatically like this one a little bit more because when you do look at the textures and so on this one initially appears to be more lightweight however in both of these formulas this is the one that actually has a plant seed oil so let's talk about that a little bit this contains echium plantagenium seed oil which is actually high in linoleic acid which is really good for people with acne prone skin you see what happens a lot with people who are acne prone is that the linoleic acid in the lipids of the skin is actually low and that results in insufficient production of ceramides which means that your skin barrier is not as healthy as you would like it to be having that ingredient in here is going to be very very beneficial for acne prone skin i actually thought that was a really nice touch in terms of the ingredients deck in this sunscreen now one of the things that make this one different is that this one actually contains tinosorb m which is one of the uv chemical filters that's using this and while neither of these have a white cast on my skin for very deep skin tones tinosorb m might leave a slight white cast so if you are much deeper than i am and you're actually trying to figure out which one you should try i definitely recommend that you pick up this one when i'm talking about blending in both of these blend in super fast like faster than a lot of other sunscreens they literally melt into the skin both of these have a natural glow finish in fact i have done several wear tests with both of these sunscreens on my face applying each one to half and when i apply them i cannot tell the difference in the finish and if i'm looking at my skin i can't tell oh yeah this side is this or this side is this the other thing is that both of them feel lightweight on the skin while this one you think it might be a little bit heavier it is also lightweight they don't feel greasy at all but one of the things that was interesting to me is that once these set I actually feel a little bit less slip on the skin with this one and that is what was shocking to me i honestly thought by leaps and bounds this one i would prefer on my skin but it so happens that i actually reach for both of them i can use both of them i have no problems using either of them and yes they do have a natural glow finish on my skin and all i will do is once the sunscreen sets i will just top them with a translucent powder and i'm good to go now you might wonder why they came out with both of these sunscreens i think a lot of people like a seeing on their sunscreen like daily moisturizer with sunscreen so it allows them to skip a step but honestly both of these have hydrating ingredients and in the initial application while this one looks a little bit thicker they both feel the same on my skin and i feel that most skin types could actually get away with either of these if you have drier skin just put your moisturizer on under this if you have very very dry skin you might still want to put a moisturizer on under this it doesn't really matter once you actually start using the product you will figure out yeah do i need more hydration do i need less and then you'll be able to tell exactly how you would pair this in your routine with other products two more sunscreens this one is from a brand called bv skin and this one is the sebum zero aloe rice vegan sunscreen and it actually says on this tube a tone up hydrating up and soothing up now i have tried quite a few products from bv skin it is a lovely brand bv skin has a lot of products that is focused on acne prone skin i find them to be very gentle and if you're somebody with very sensitive skin but you're dealing with acne or maybe you are somebody with very dry skin and you want products that's not going to dry out your skin which tends to be the case when it comes to acne treating products this is a really good brand to look to and i think their sunscreen was also along that line now while i did see sebum zero written on this tube which is attractive to me because of my oily skin i also saw tone up on this and the thing about it is most of the times 
When you see tone up on a sunscreen, it usually means that they have mineral filters, which more than likely is going to leave some type of cast on brown skin tones. But also because for a lot of fairer people, that white cast actually really does give a tone up kind of BB cream, evening out skin tone type of effect on the skin. And that's why I avoided trying this sunscreen for so long. It turns out that this one only uses chemical filters. And the brand does recommend this for both oily and sensitive skin. A couple of things I want to mention about this is that it does have this Alorize complex, which is great for sensitivity as well as being moisturizing on the skin. It has a Ceylon Cinnamon Bark Extract, which is supposed to help regulate sebum production. And they also have some other ingredients to help cool down and calm irritated skin. So this one is definitely marketed towards people who are acne prone. Now that being said, while this says Sebum Zero, as you'll realize this does not have a matte finish on the skin. It also has a natural glow finish on my skin. This one, while also lightweight, it is not as lightweight as the other sunscreens that I mentioned. I can actually feel this one on the skin, not in a really bad way. I can feel like I've applied something. It doesn't feel heavy, suffocating or uncomfortable. But given the amount of very lightweight sunscreens on the market right now, I could definitely tell the difference when I apply this one. And that's one of the reasons why I don't tend to reach for this one as much. I also have no eye sting, no irritation. This one works really well on my skin in terms of how it feels, how it looks, how it blends in. And I should also mention that this sunscreen also contains chanexamic acid. So while you're getting your sun protection, it also has ingredients to actually help fight hyperpigmentation as well. While the brand actually recommends this for oily skin, I am not sure based on the amount of sunscreens that I've tried that this would be one of my top choices for oily skin. If you are dry, normal, even combination skin, and you're probably concerned about acne, sensitivity, and so on, then this might be the sunscreen for you to try. And the last sunscreen in this video is a Japanese sunscreen. This is actually a very popular Japanese sunscreen that I purchased and I don't know why I didn't try it sooner. And this is by Kose or Kose, I don't know how to say it. This is their Suncut UV Perfect Essence Super Waterproof SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. Now let me just address the whole concept of waterproof. There is no sunscreen that's actually really fully waterproof what sunscreens are is that they can be water resistant and what that means is that when you wear the sunscreen and let's say you go in water it's going to hold up better than a sunscreen that was not designed to be water resistant that being said this is water resistant and sweat resistant a sunscreen like this is going to really adhere in terms of how that film sets on the skin and while the sunscreen is fragrance free and essential oil free it does contain alcohol and that again that's one of the reasons why this one blends in so easily it feels so light weight and very very quickly it absorbs into the skin consistency of this one is really really gel like like you can see it immediately it blends out and it disappears into the skin there is that cooling effect and i do get a smell of the alcohol in this it dissipates very quickly though and i will say that's something that i've noticed with a lot of japanese sunscreens because a lot of them that are water and sweat resistant they do contain alcohol but they tend to combat that with a lot of hydrating ingredients so this sunscreen actually has a lot of antioxidants it has a lot of soothing ingredients it has glycerin it has sodium hyaluronate and again it does have a combination of chemical uv filters including old and and new. Like all the other sunscreens in this video, this sunscreen also does not burn my eye. I love the blending, but this one definitely has a more glowy finish on my skin. That being said, it's glowy, but it's not tacky. Again, all I will do is once it sets, I will top it with some translucent powder and I'm good to go. I'd recommend this one for anybody from normal up to oily skin. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to you if you have dry skin simply because of that alcohol content unless you actually apply a really good moisturizer before and you have no issues when it comes to the alcohol in the product then you'd be good to go. So those are all the sunscreens in today's video and let me just mention that usually when I know that I'm going to be outside in terms of exposed to UV in the sun for more than the usual I will generally reach for sunscreens that are water and sweat resistant because I know they're going to adhere to my skin a little bit better versus sunscreens that are probably not water resistant and those are the ones I will generally use in my day-to-day -day activities I'm probably just stepping outside periodically walking from place to place and not staying outside specifically we've come to the end of another video I hope that this sunscreen roundup was helpful for you leave a comment down below if you've tried any of these or if any of these sunscreens look interesting to you and let me know what is your current favorite sunscreen and have you tried sunsticks yet? I'll be back again with more sunscreen reviews soon. Take care, guys. <laughs> Bye.